Hey guys, it's been a busy week for updates, news, and progression for myself in Fortnite. Earlier this week, Battle Royale was released free to play to the public, and since then, there has already been one dev Q&A, a dev update video, and patch 1.6.4 for the PvP mode Battle Royale. The Q&A and the dev update were released a few minutes apart on the 28th, and the dev update video is literally the BR devs reading and answering some of the questions from the Q&A document they published over on their, their forum. I'll have links to both in the description below. There were simple questions like, where can I download Battle Royale? Do I need Xbox Live Gold to play? How are you addressing weapon bloom and accuracy? Just in case you're curious, you can download BR from the console marketplaces and Fortnite.com. You do need Xbox Live Gold to play, and they are constantly evaluating weapon performance. In fact, the 1.6.4 update had some tweaks to it, but I'll cover that a little later. There were some questions regarding new features, like are they adding voice chat? Their response was, yes, voice chat is on the priority list and is a must-have feature, so it is coming. We also learned that, yes, they will be adding more weapons and maps. If any of you guys have seen anything on the PvE side of the game, there's hundreds of weapons. Um, so they've got lots of different, different options to pick from. Obviously, they tweak them differently for PvP. Vehicles is another topic. Um... They were not rejected by, by Epic, but uh, they are not an immediate feature they are working on. Also, a first-person mode was asked if it's coming, and um, it's basically nowhere on their radar. They feel like it is not a good fit for the game at this moment, um, so they're not even working towards a first-person first person shooter mode. There were um, quite a bit more questions asked and answered in the document. Um, the video is short, but the document was a little, little beefier. So again, I'll leave links in the description below for both the Q&A and the BR Dev Update video. Moving on to patch 164, which was released on the 29th. This patch focused heavily on weapon accuracy, specifically for the assault rifles. If you haven't played much with the assault rifles, and or naturally have potato aim, and are not super sensitive to details on how your weapons are responding to your, your aiming and your trigger pulls, then you might start to see an increase in your kills after this update. The reason being is that guns in Battle Royale don't always shoot where your crosshair is pointing at, as frustrating as it is. Um, to make your gun fire as accurately and consistently as possible to where you're actually aiming, you pretty much have to crouch and stay still, otherwise the moment you start walking, strifing, or even hip firing, uh, you can kiss your accuracy goodbye. You'll be shooting up, down, left, right, anywhere but where you're physically aiming. On a side note, there are different rarities of weapons. Common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. And the higher the quality, the more accurate and more damage it will do. So uh, that's that's where the design and the balancing comes in. Um, when you start off and you grab a, a gray colored or a green colored M4 and you're dodging somebody back and forth and firing and frustrated why you're not hitting headshots because your cursor's on it's because the the rarity of the weapon. They're dialing that in. The shitty accuracy mechanic was intentional, but... Um, the community obviously hasn't approved of this, and there has already been two dramatic accuracy buffs pre-launch, and this 164 update is yet another accuracy increase. If you want to see the raw numbers on what they did to tweak the accuracy, check the link to the notes below. But basically, the, the lower the rarity got massive accuracy buffs, and then the higher the rarity got even less, less buff. Just to narrow down the, the wide range of <laughs> shitty accuracy to godlike accuracy, so they're all a little more in line. Honestly, they should all be accurate in my opinion, and then there should just be damage and range, um, range damage increases on the higher, higher the rarity. But that's just me. I like to, sh I like, I like my bullets to go where I'm pointing. I have Battlefield One for guns that want to misfire and shoot off to the side. <laughs> Okay, let's shift gears over to the PvE side of things. For those of you that are not aware, Survive the Storm is ending on October 2nd at 4 a.m. Eastern Time. That's like a day and a half, people. The next event, Horde Bash, does not have an official release date yet, uh, but I assume it's very, very soon. During the PvE dev update video, Zach and Darren wanted to let everybody know that if you had crashed during the Survive the Storm, you should see your rewards soon if you haven't already. Following that info, they went into a Q&A and they answered a question regarding how weak ninjas, outlanders, and constructors are at late game content. Not just weak damage wise, they're just not, they don't bring enough to the table to merit the use of them outside of using a group of four soldiers. 
They acknowledged this, but didn't have a specific answer on how they plan on fixing it, but they wanted us to know that it is a priority. Next, they answered a silly question regarding the amount of rain it requires to level up late game, and they basically stated that the rain isn't excessive in their eyes. Fortnite is a free-to-play game, and rain, lightning, eye of the storms, storm shields are all set in place so that players cannot min-max their heroes and weapons in just one weekend. And lastly, they answered a question regarding the story quest line, or lack thereof, in Canny and Twine. They basically said that they are hard at work creating new story missions for these zones, and they are also trying to figure out ways for the players that have already progressed through some of these zones to be able to have an option to go back and experience the missed story quests if they choose to. And finally, yesterday Zach posted a Challenge the Horde game mode primer over on their forum in order to help some of us prepare, and also just to put out more information regarding the Horde bash mode that is just around the corner. Links to this thread in the PvE dev update will also be available in the description below. Some highlights of the article let us know that there are 100 plus challenges, aka difficulties, to complete. This is, uh, this is also a four player mode, and each player is allowed one defender. I did not know that, so uh, start leveling up your defenders, peoples. Like, now, get them leveled. Get them leveled because they are additional, so you can have four players and four defenders. There are 29 consecutive quest rewards that provide scavenger tickets and or a chance of a rare defender, melee, or ranged epic scavenger weapon, legendary scavenger makeshift launcher transform key, legendary scavenger weapon transform key, and a legendary scavenger hero. You can play six challenges a day for scavenger tickets and horde points. I think the horde points are what are used for your skill tree, so they're going to limit how much you can progress through your skill tree as well, it sounds like, per day. Each reward has a 24-hour cooldown before you can earn another. Higher difficulty earns more scavenger tickets, that's a given. Scavenger llamas will be replacing the storm llamas, and we will have access to four new scavenger heroes and nine new scavenger weapons. So yeah, it's been, it's been a busy week for all things Fortnite, as well as for myself. My friends and I made it into Twine early this week, and then we took a couple days off of PvE to earn some Ws over in Battle Royale. And now I'm back on that PvE grind, since there isn't any kind of progression system in PvP yet. It's literally just, hey, that was fun, let's do it again. Uh, there's nothing to show, there's, I mean, once you win once, you get an umbrella. That is it, my friends. Um, it hasn't been confirmed that whether or not your stats will be carried over to leaderboards and the stats once those become active. Um, so I'm kind of kind of in the air right now on whether or not it's even worth really playing. It is kind of fun, um, but it's not it's nothing nearly as rewarding as playing playing the PVE. But again, to each his own. Some people hate PVE content. Some people just want to shoot other players. So whatever. But uh, let's see. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Plus we need to complete the 14 day level 70 ASAP. I mean, we got a day and a half, a day and a half. So I need to get a group together. We need to we need to get it. We need to get it. I need that banner. Breaking rights. And on that note. I need to go farm a ton of mechanical parts now for this for this 14 day. So I'll uh, I'll leave you with that. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye now.